911 Global Meds Disclaimer This video and any contents herein are posted on this YouTube channel of 911 Global Meds for informational and educational purposes only. Please see the detailed video contents disclaimer and the copyright disclaimer in the text section below. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Drug Talk. As always, I'm your host, Gary Campbell. Today we're going to be discussing a combination antibiotic medication known as piperacillin tazobactam. It's more commonly referred to as Piptaz. Now before I talk about the medication itself, just keep in mind that this channel is for information purposes only and not to be used as a source for recommendations for your personal health care. So piperacillin is a semi-synthetic beta-lactam antibiotic. It's bactericidal against many gram-positive and gram-negative aerobic and anaerobic microorganisms. It acts by inhibiting bacterial septum formation as well as cell wall synthesis. Tazobactam is a beta-lactamase inhibitor. So there are many different situations when Piptaz would be used. One would be for the treatment of moderate or severe appendicitis, which is complicated by a rupture or abscess. It can be used in community-acquired pneumonia, and it can also be used to treat hospital-acquired pneumonia. It can be used to treat moderate to severe, uncomplicated or complicated infections of the skin or subcutaneous tissue. It can be used in moderate to severe pelvic inflammatory disease. Peritonitis can be treated with Piptaz. And finally, purpural endometritis can be treated as well if it's moderate to severe. Now, before somebody was to use Piptaz, there is a contraindication they must clear, as well as some precautions and warnings they should be made aware of. It would be contraindicated in patients who have a hypersensitivity to penicillins, cephalosporins, or beta-lactamase inhibitors. In terms of precautions, probenicid should not be used with this medication unless the benefits clearly outweigh the risks. Serious cutaneous reactions have occurred with the use of this medication, such as Steven Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, and drug reactions with asonophilia and systemic symptoms, or DRESS. Hypokalemia, or low potassium, may also occur with this medication. This would be more likely to occur if the patient was also using diuretics. Monitoring would be recommended in patients who already have low potassium reserves. Caution should be used in patients who require a low-sodium diet, as this medication does contain sodium in the formulation. Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea has also been reported with the use of Piptaz, and this can even occur two months after using the medication. Bleeding manifestations have been reported in patients using piperacillin. This is more common when patients have renal failure. Leukopenia and neutropenia have both been reported, especially when patients use the medication for an extended period of time. Serious anaphylactic reactions have also been reported. Some of these have been fatal. A dosage adjustment will be required in those who have renal insufficiency, as well as those undergoing hemodialysis. And finally, caution must be used in patients who have cystic fibrosis, as there is an increased risk of fever and rash. Now, once somebody is cleared of the contraindication and made aware of the precautions and warnings, and they start using Piptaz, they would be most likely getting this in hospital, and they would be getting it intravenously. When treating community-acquired pneumonia, 3.375 grams given intravenously every 6 hours for about 7 to 10 days seems to work. In hospital-acquired pneumonia, the dose would be increased, so it would be 4.5 grams given intravenously every 6 hours. This time it would be for 7 to 14 days, so you may see it used a little longer. For peritonitis, 3.357 grams intravenously every 6 hours for 7 to 10 days is what is recommended. Now, as with all medications, there are some adverse reactions or side effects that people may experience while using Piptaz, so I'll go over some of those here with you now. Up to 3% of patients may notice itchiness, and 4% may notice a rash. Constipation can happen between 7 and 8.5% of the time, and diarrhea comes in at a frequency of 4 to 20%. Nausea happens about 7% of the time, and about 3% of patients experience vomiting. 5 to 8% experience headaches, and about 6% may notice insomnia. Fever happens between 2 and 3% of the time. Some serious but more rare side effects would be Clostridium difficile associated diarrhea, 
Those dermatological conditions that I mentioned, such as Steven Johnson syndrome and toxic epidermal necrosis, as well as agranulocytosis, leukopenia, and neutropenia. Finally, anaphylaxis is possible, as well as the development of a seizure. That's all we're going to talk about today with this combination antibiotic product that contains piperacillin and tazobactam. As always, I'm thankful you took the time to come by and watch one of my videos. If you found the information valuable and you'd like to help me grow this channel, you can do so by liking the videos, sharing the videos, or most importantly, subscribing to the YouTube channel. There's also some links in the description you can check out as well. That's it for today. Take care.